Hey everybody, this is Dr. Cooper. Welcome to week four. I can't believe we're at week four already. Time is flying. So I'm in modules and I'm going to go ahead and click on the week four folder. But as you can see, we have a lot to do this week. So a couple things, those of you that have topics, good job, way to go. It was tough getting there, but you got a topic. And now our goal is to argue that topic. And if you've already started looking at the week four folder, uh, you know that there was some reading that I needed for you to do uh, on arguments. So from your online handbook, read that chapter 11, arguments. You also had a quiz on that today or uh, yesterday. It's Tuesday, by the way. Uh, and then there's a handout, a really important handout called Position and Proposal Arguments. I'm going to go ahead and open that up so we can look at it. But let me just kind of give you a, a brief rundown of what your goal is going to be for the next 12 weeks. Um, you're going to write an extended research paper, but you're going to write it in, in phases. And your paper will be one of two types of paper. Well, they'll both be arguments, but it'll either be a position paper or a proposal paper. And so this handout that I just opened up is the a document that will help you understand the difference between the two. Now, a position paper was what we've been kind of talking about mostly so far, but I'm gonna show you how those topics can easily be changed into a proposal paper. Well, let's start with the position. You need to start with the research question, right? And we've already talked about how that research question has to give you two sides to an issue. So we talked about how if we say, should marijuana be legalized? Okay, well, the answer is either yes, it should, or no, it shouldn't. Now, I'm not saying the answer has to be black or white, but that's how we create an argument in a position paper. You take a side. So your side might be, yes, marijuana should be legalized. Or your side might be the other side where you say, no, marijuana should not be legalized. And obviously, you argue that point. And that's what a position paper is. Now, before you actually get to the argument stage, people have to understand why you're even talking about this issue. So one of the things that we're going to do first for our major paper is we're going to write a small uh, part of that paper, which is called defining the issue. Now, when I talk about the proposal paper, you'll be defining the problem. But let's finish the position paper first. So one of the things that you have to do is I always like to explain it as you have to explain what's the big whoop, right? So if someone asks you today, what are you writing your paper about? And I'm just going to continue with this marijuana because no one picked pick that topic, which is great because it's a little overdone, but I'm going to use that as my example. So um, if you tell somebody what your paper is, you'll say, oh, I'm writing an argument on legalization of marijuana. And they say, what do you, what do you mean? Why? What's, why is that so important? Well, then you have to sort of explain to them why you chose to write that topic because it should be an important issue. So you would explain that to them. And what you would be doing is defining the issue or explaining what's the big whoop, right? So not everybody understands that an issue is an issue. So if I say just to the general public that parking at GCC on Monday mornings at 8 a.m. is pretty tough, they're gonna be like, well, wh what do you mean? Why is it so tough? I would have to explain to them, you know, 10, uh, 8 a.m. on a Monday is when most students take their classes. The parking lot is only so big. Everybody wants to be up close to the building. So if you're trying to find a spot there, it's gonna be difficult. I'm explaining what the issue is. And that's what you're going to have to do when you write your position paper. You're gonna define the issue first. Now, when you define the issue, you remain neutral you should not have a strong opinion yet, or you should not be taking a side yet. You're just trying to introduce the people to the topic and you will explain that there are two issues. You'll say, well, the question is whether or not we should legalize uh, marijuana. Some people believe that we should, and they believe this because, and then you explain just a little bit of what they believe. And then you say, but on the other hand, there are others who don't believe that. And they think that uh, we shouldn't legalize it. And these are the reasons why. So you're presenting both sides, and then you basically uh, introduce the information to the people, and then at that point, you would introduce your thesis. But we stop. You're not going to state your thesis yet. So we're going to write a whole paper, two pages, of just defining the issue. You have to un explain to people 
what's the big whoop about that topic. So it's a research paper. You'll use your sources to help you define it, but you will not take a side yet. It'll still be a mystery. Now here's what's great. Even though you've presented which side of the argument you want to be on in your proposal, you can always change your mind. And the idea is that you picked a topic that you probably don't know a lot about. Hopefully you did. The people who don't know a lot about their topic going into it always do better than the person who picks a topic because they think they know a lot about it or they think there's an overabundance of information out there about it. That's like a nightmare. It's better to not know anything because how good is an argument going to be and how well are you going to use your sources when you have to find them and you have to learn something. So the idea is that you're going to use a minimum of three sources for this first paper and you're going to define the issue. Now if you are developing a proposal paper, you will see that a proposal is a, you're proposing a solution to a problem. So instead of defining the issue for the proposal paper, you'll be defining the problem. So if we look at the issue of should we legalize marijuana and we think of that as a problem. So what's a problem that legalizing marijuana could pose? Well, right now we say that because it's illegal, uh, many people are being arrested for it and put in jail and we're wasting lots of resources and uh, people are needlessly going to jail. You know, most uh, people that are caught uh, with marijuana have very little amounts on them. And so you might consider that to be a problem. So you would define that problem and try to convince your audience that that problem exists. So you're probably scratching your head going, huh. I don't know about that problem. Well, I would need to do a better job of defining that problem for you. So that's what this first paper would be, is if you change your topic into a problem, then offering a solution would then be your argument. So if I were using that as my argument, as my example, if I'm using that example as my paper, then my proposed solution would be, let's legalize marijuana, because it would then solve the problem of too much overcrowding in prisons or people needlessly going to prison, etc. Again, I would have to convince you first that that is indeed a problem. And if many people are saying, eh, that's not a problem, they're doing drugs, they need to go to jail, then it's not a very good paper. I probably wouldn't pick that anyway. So you just need to look at your topic. Here's another example of taking an issue and turning it into a problem. So let's say the issue is, should um, we offer sex education in school? Or how about middle school? You know, that's young, these 12, 13 year olds. Some people are gonna say, no, that's too young. I wanna do my own sex education at home. I don't want the schools to do it. Other people are like, oh yeah, we should teach it in school because they're not getting enough at home and there's a problem happening. Um, so that's the issue, two sides of the issue, right? I would explain the issue and then I would choose a side. Well, if I want to turn that into a problem, I look at the issue and I say, well, what is the problem as a result of no sex education in, in schools? You might say, well, maybe the teenage pregnancy rate is really high. That would be a problem. So I define the problem and now I would offer my solution of let's offer sex education in the, in the middle schools to curb the problem of teenage pregnancy. Okay, so all of your topics, whether you're choosing healthcare, uh, immigration, DACA, all of those can be turned from a strict issue based, take one side or the other, to a problem based solving the problem with your proposal. So those are the two types of papers. There's a lesson that will go through it for you. This handout will help you. And then obviously uh, there is the chapter 11 that will talk more generally about um, argument. I'll look at, I'll, let's look at the outline to show where it's best to see that. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go into paper instructions. This is where the dates are that I'll change. Okay, so here are examples of position paper um, outlines. So you want to pull these up because you're going to write part of the outline with your paper. So let's do proposal paper. Okay, so we have the example paper and uh, well, let's make it a little bit bigger for us. So this is an example outline and you're going to write this first section as paper one, defining the problem. 
So you state what the problem is. And this was an example of, of a problem okay, that uh, a student chose to write. Then you want to show it's serious enough to need solving. Okay, so you have to explain the problem. Then you want to analyze the problem. So when you analyze the problem, you're showing the causes and the consequences of the problem. So what caused this problem to exist and what is a result of this problem existing, right? All of that is paper one. And then you can see that in paper two, you're going to come back and state your solution to the problem. So for paper one, you're only going to use this part of the outline and you're going to include that part of the outline at the beginning of your paper. So if I were looking at position paper outline example, let's open that one up. Okay, so this is the uh, example of the position paper. So again, you're only going to write the first part of the outline and you state the issue. You tell what kind of an issue it is. You set your boundaries. Now what setting the boundaries means is you don't want your paper to be too broad. You're only writing eight to ten pages. I know that seems like a lot to you but it's really not. So you have to narrow your boundaries sometimes and you, you can't include everything. So setting your boundaries sets your limitations to what you're going to cover. An example, if I'm doing the marijuana paper again, well, I don't want to just talk about legalization of marijuana in general, maybe. So let's narrow the boundaries and maybe I only want to argue for medical marijuana. OK, so not recreational, medical. So I'm narrowing the boundaries and that's all I'm going to talk about. Right. Uh, another example is if I wanted to argue that contact sports are bad for children. That's very broad, right? Contact sports, there's so many, and children. Children entails from the day the child is born all the way until they're 17, almost 18 years old. Well, I don't think a 17-year-old playing uh, football is bad, so I need to narrow my boundaries. So I'm going to say that Contact sports are possibly bad for children between the ages of 5 and 10. Okay, I've narrowed the boundaries. Now when people say, oh, football is not bad, they should play football in high school, I'm, I'm going to be like, nope, those are outside my boundaries. I'm only arguing within these boundaries. And some of you will need to set your own boundaries. If you're talking about health care, that could be pretty broad. Maybe you want to narrow it down uh, to... Um, the penalty that people have to pay if they're not in health care. Maybe you only want to argue that aspect of it. Or with DACA, maybe there's one aspect of it. I'm not saying that you have to narrow the boundaries, but in some cases you will need to. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all of these in detail, but you can see that I've given you several different documents that are going to help you do this assignment. So paper one, you will define the issue or define the problem. Now it's called a synthesis paper because you are synthesizing a minimum of three sources into your work. All right, it's your paper. You have a voice, although you will remain neutral. I should read your paper and not know what side you're on when I read this first part of the paper, right? You will use the three sources. You will cite your sources using APA. Anywhere that you say use MC, use MLA, ignore it because I've made that change just recently and there's still some pieces in here that I've overlooked. Okay, just follow the examples that I've given you and you will be fine with this essay. Now, follow the outline. You will include that first part of the outline uh, in your paper when you submit it. All right, and so again, we're going to go over to Connect and we will submit our paper over there. Now, if you click this button right now to go over to Connect, you're not going to find it because I haven't opened it yet because I wanted to make sure everybody understood. Oop, there's MLA right there. I'm going to fix that. So, uh, but it, it will open up tonight. And if you're ready to submit your paper by tonight, you can. Now, the dates. So there's going to be three phases in this paper. The first phase is your draft. And you will submit your draft, I believe, by Friday. Uh, you will submit your first draft by Friday. Then you will all be put into groups with similar topics. And you're going to do peer review and connect. And I believe you'll have until Monday or Wednesday of next week to do that. Then you'll look at the feedback that you got 
and then you'll submit a final draft. So when you looked at the first page of this assignment, you could see that there were multiple due dates for paper one. Let's go right here. Uh, where is it? Pippa one. Where did I see that? Oh, it's on the um, week four page. These dates show that you have multiple steps for this paper. Now, if you want to get full credit for your essay, you need to make sure that you participate in all of these steps. Okay, so here it says the draft is due. Okay, I'll change that date to say September 15th, which is Friday. Peer reviews are due, right? And I'll change that date. And then the final draft is due. So you want to make sure that you're following the dates. You will only see the dates when you go over to connect. In Canvas, it's only going to show you the final date. And if you wait to that final date, which some of you try to do, you're going to miss half of that assignment. And you're going to get half credit for the assignment. So this Friday, your dra first draft is due. So go to connect and, and see how that works. Okay, this video is getting way too long. So let's go ahead and stop this. And uh, if you have questions, let me know.